Biotech is one of those industries that everybody wants to get into, but not everybody knows how to get into. So I'm going to share eight things I would do if I wanted to transition into biotech in 2025. Obviously, everybody's journey is going to be different. It's not a one size fits all approach, but these are the things that I found to be the most effective as someone who works in biotech and has for the last four years and entered by way of clinical research, has also worked in the pharmaceutical industry and has a background in healthcare. Please note that I mentioned I entered biotech by way of clinical research. So this list is also applicable to people who are looking to land their first role in clinical research. I'm Dr. List, by the way. Pleasure to meet you. And I feel like I'll turn this into a series. So drop any other questions you have and I'll answer them in subsequent videos. Now to get right into it. Number one, use job boards to analyze descriptions. Before you think about starting to update your resume, to apply to any jobs, you need to understand what roles you're going to be applying to. You need to understand the titles that you're going to be targeting. And that means you need to do a little bit of market research. You're going to use job boards like LinkedIn, Indeed, to just search blanket terms like bio technology, clinical research, or pharmaceutical to see what types of roles come up. And you're going to scroll through and sift through those positions, look at those job descriptions, and analyze those to see what skill sets do you already possess that they are calling out within these job descriptions. That's going to help you narrow down and assess what positions you might want to target. Another reason this exercise is so helpful is because it answers the question of what level of experience or education do you need to apply for certain roles. Those job descriptions will call out specifically what the requirements are, and they they will also give you some insight on whether they are flexible with transferable skill sets versus if they require you to have a specific degree to target a role done this effectively, then you've made it very easy for yourself in step two to assess your work history and experience and identify your transferable skills because it's basically going to be all the things that jumped out at you from those job descriptions and said, oh, I've done that before. Those are the keywords and those are the transferable skills that you have that apply to the roles that you're interested in. Or you ask, yes, this is going to be a combination of soft and technical skills. Technical being things like data analysis, project management, regulatory compliance, soft skills being things like adaptability, attention to detail, effective communication skills. And I'm going to hold your hand when I say this, but you need to have a combination of technical and soft skills. Being adaptable and having attention to detail is not enough to cut it if you don't have the technical skill set and technical expertise. We are literally talking about drug development. It's similar to healthcare because you actually do need to care about people because these are medications that are going to go to people's mothers, grandmothers, cousins to save their lives potentially. It brings us to step four, which is mapping your skills to the roles. And ideally, you want to prioritize roles that you have a 70 percent or more match now honestly I say give or take 50 percent or more like if you're looking through the job description and you've done or you're familiar with at least 50 percent of those things and meet most of the requirements then it's still a good match but I would say you want to target anywhere from 50 to 70 percent getting kind of long so I'm going to follow up in part two if you have any questions or if this was